So in the last video, we saw one example of hypothesis testing. So that hypothesis testing is actually a two tail testing, two tail hypothesis testing. What is that? You see there our null hypothesis was H0 is mu is equal to mu0 and H1 is mu is not equal to mu0. If you have this situation, in that case, what will happen? This, you have two tails, this tail here and this tail here. This forms your critical region, right? Where you will reject your null hypothesis. And here you will accept your null hypothesis. This is your acceptance region. This interval is your acceptance interval, right? So here, P value is the probability of these two tails. So that is why this is called a two tail test. But we can also have a situation like this. Suppose our uh, null hypothesis is mu is equal to mu naught. And uh, alternative is mu greater than mu naught. In that case, this is your critical region because when you have value greater than mu naught, like this is your critical region, right? There will be a significance level alpha. So this is one tail test. Similarly, you can also have a situation where mu is equal to mu naught and this is your null hypothesis and your alternating hypothesis is mu less than mu naught. In that case, this is your critical region, right? So your p value is again the probability of one tail here. So the, in these situations, we call it as one tail test. So let us look at one problem. So the problem is that a random sample of 100 recorded deaths in the past showed an average lifespan of 71.8 years. So you have a sample data from 100 people who died and you saw that the average lifespan for them is 71.8 years. And the population standard deviation is given that is 8.9 years. Does this seem to indicate that the mean lifespan today is greater than 70 years? Use a significance level of 0 0.5, 0 0.05. So let us see how we are going to do, do this problem. So here you see again, you will uh, specify your uh, null hypothesis. Say this is my null hypothesis that mean time is 70 years. Okay, and then I have alternative hypothesis, which is because we want to uh, uh, test a mean life is greater than 70. So I'll take this. Okay, so that means uh, now uh, alpha is alpha is given to be 0 0.05. So what is my critical region? Critical region will be. So you, uh, you, you want this thing, right? Here you have 70. This is this is your mean 70 right and this this will be your uh, after a significance level of alpha so this is your critical region right so we we uh, uh, are looking at z alpha that is z 0 0.05 so do you remember so our critical region was when you have one sided bounds in the last chapter we had like this one sided bounds were uh, x bar plus z alpha sigma by square root of n and x bar minus z alpha sigma by square root of n. So you had a z alpha here. You don't have z alpha by 2. And this value, if you took, uh, like take this value from the table, so this value will be 1 point, uh, this value is 1.645. Okay, so this is your z value. Okay, now let us uh, find the, so it means that we have uh, if z greater than 1.645 that is your critical region okay so you have this situation this is 1.645 this here is your critical region where you will reject null hypothesis and this is your acceptance region so in this case now uh, uh, I'm using the classical approach. So if if I compute my statistics, so my data is x bar is 71.8, sigma is 8.9, that is a population variance. So z will be 71.8 minus 70 over 8.9, sample size was 100, square root of 100. So that will give me 2.02. .02. So this value, this value is here in the critical region, lies in the critical region. Therefore, reject H0. Therefore, decision is the average life span is greater than 70 years. Okay? Because your H0 was that mu is equal to 70 years and we reject it. And if you want to uh, do this the same problem with uh, p-value, then uh, how you will compute your p-value? So you see, 
this this statistics is 2.02 so you have 2.02 here so you will look at this probability so your p value will be in the last case where you had two tails you were finding the probability of two tails here you have to just look at this probability that probability z is greater than 2.02 so that will be 1 minus probability z less than 2.02 look at this value from the table this number is 0 0.0217 so clearly this is less than 0 0.05 which was your significance level therefore reject h naught so you see the difference between classical approach and p-value approach they are almost same just here you have to find the probability now let us look at another problem here you have another problem that a manufacturer of sports uh, equipment has developed a new synthetic fishing line uh, that the company claims has a mean breaking strength of 8 kg with standard deviation of 0.5 kg if a random sample of 50 lines is tested and found to have the mean breaking strength of 7.8 kg with 0 0.01 significance level test the hypothesis that mu is equal to 8 so here you see again mu is equal to 8 and mu is not equal to 8 okay so here you have this two tail test because you are not talking about less than 8 or greater than 8 it is just equal to 8 or not equal to 8 so that is what you have to understand there right this is your step one then your alpha is 0 0.01 that is your significance level okay so in this in this case your critical region will be critical region will be uh, uh, because you you have your population uh, uh, standard deviation given 0 0.5 okay so your critical region will be z alpha by 2 to z alpha by 2 minus right so if you look at these values so this is like this z alpha by 2 is z 0 0.01 by 2 this value will be you can check it this is 2.75 and here it will be minus 2.75 so my critical region is minus 2.575 to 2.575 now you you compute your statistics if you compute your statistics that will be x bar minus mu over sigma by square root of n so x bar is here 7.8 minus 8 over sigma is 0.5 divided by sample size is uh, 50 so this gives you a number equal to 2.83 so this number is outside the uh, where where this number is can you locate it it's here this number is here okay so this belongs to the critical region outside the acceptance region therefore reject h naught okay so we found that therefore a mean is not 8 kg okay so now you if you want to uh, use the p-value what you are going to do so you see this is your uh, 2.83 is your critical value right minus 2.83 minus 2.83 2.83 so you you are going to find the probability of these two tails so probability that mod z is greater than 2.83 you can use the tables i'll just write the value this is 0 0.44 0 0.0046 which is less than 0 0.01 therefore reject h naught okay so with both the things you will get the same result right now let us look at the uh, now now one more thing when when the uh, population uh, variance is not known in that case you have s so we know that in that case what we will do we have this result that x x bar minus mu over s over square root of n has t distribution with degree of freedom n minus 1 so either you use this result or if your sample size is more than 30 in that case you can approximate your sigma with s so you will have this is same as this and then you can go for the normal distribution so that is your choice okay so let us look at one example here so we have this example that addison Electrical Institute has published figures on the number of kilowatt hours used annually by, by various home appliances. It is claimed that the vacuum cleaner uses an average of 46 kilowatt hours per year. So that is your claim. So what is your mu naught? Uh, sorry, H naught. H naught will be mu is equal to 46. If a random sample of 12 is chosen, so your n is 12. And an average of 42 kilowatt per hour for vacuum cleaner with standard deviation of this is found so you get x bar is 42 and 
S. This is a, a sample standard deviation, not the population standard deviation. 11.9. Okay. So, does it at a significance level of 0 0.05 accepts or rejects the hypothesis? So, your H1 will be mu is not equal to 46 because we are not talking about anything uh, greater or less. Right. Okay. Fine. So, uh, we have here x bar is equal to 42 so in this case what you are going to do so you have just a minute give me a moment okay so so uh, okay in the question uh, does it uh, accepts or rejects the hypothesis this so here the hypothesis is this mu less than 46 kilowatt hours okay so in this case if my if i want to look at this hypothesis if I assume my null hypothesis to be this, so in that case, my alternative hypothesis, because this is the thing I, I want to look at, I'll assume to be, uh, it to be mu less than 46, right? So here we have these things, alpha is 0 0.05. So let us uh, look at our critical values. So here the critical values will be, because we are looking at one sided, one tail test. Okay, so one tail test so you will look at t alpha so your t alpha here is t 0 0.05 with degree of freedom equal to n minus 1 which is 12 minus 1 is equal to 11 so you will see 11th row of the t table so this number is if you calculate it this is 1.796 so therefore our critical region is because you are looking for less than so critical region is z uh, uh sorry t t because we are computing t value here less than 1 minus 1.96 because this is the thing you are looking at okay this is your critical region for the null hypothesis now let us compute statistics sample statistics so that will be x bar minus mu over s upon square root of n x bar is uh, we just computed it to be 42 minus 46 over S is 11.9 square root of 12. So that is minus 1.16. So this is minus 1.796. 1.16 is here. So this does not belong to critical region. Therefore, except we fail to reject H0. Fine. Okay. So it means that we cannot say, uh, we, we uh, depending on the data, we still have that mu should be 46 okay so we fail to reject h0 with p value also you can do this for p value what you'll do p value will be probability that uh, your t value is less than this number and if you compute it from the table it is this which is uh, more than your significance level therefore accept h0 so in this case you are accepting your h0 so this is how you will be doing the hypothesis testing so we have discussed two cases one where population standard deviation is no known and one where population standard deviation is not known you will use the corresponding z and t distributions we will be looking at difference of means also that when we have difference of means then also we can use hypothesis testing so we will see that in the next video